Walk to the main supply of the food. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. Someone had put up a chain link fence, but it looked like I wasn't the first person to hop it. My brother Milton disappeared when I was four. It was like the house just swallowed him up. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it.
As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. The house felt like it had always been here. Even the swing set was older than my mother. <laughs> Prowling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, they were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara along with the rest of the house.
Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house, after it sank. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Barbara was a child star for two years, until America grew out of it. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him.
Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. My Halloween candy was all gone. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. I kept eating and eating. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat! I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass.
imagined his face looking up and seeing mine through my talons. I swallowed him up, and I didn't chew one bit. Then I flew off to find something bigger. A mama rabbit! choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark. and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. smelled people everywhere.
I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. I got closer and closer. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. <laughs>